Kilda. Um, my name is Orabala Tukaki and I'm from the tribal nation of Te Whanua Apunui, which is on the east coast of the North Island of Aotearoa, New Zealand. As an organisation like PPP that supports indigeneity, not only just from the Pacific, but just how you do it within your own area with First Nations. Um, what that really fed for me in Red Tide was that it was it's so important as Indigenous peoples to say what it is that's impacting upon us. Because often we're the voiceless people, often we're the under-resourced people, um, often we're the invisible people. And so a lot of our Indigenous um, areas, particularly in the Pacific, um, but certainly countries and areas that have very little resources are often indigenous based and are often the most impacted. And so it was really important not only to bring it back home to my tribal area, for my own people to sort of see this incredible global space because there were people that came from here, um, from Australia, from um, the US, from um, some of the South American, you know, sort of families all coming over um, and and really saying that as um, we are so concerned, we're so connected with our country, we are so connected with our land, with our seas, these are what our indigenous sciences have observed, these are what the white scientists are saying as well and how can we create, um, extend our global network so that it can best inform our localised communities. And so, um, and that was really grounded in cultural protocol and um, meeting community um, in a respectful and dignified way of listening to other people's indigenous perspectives, um, indigenous sciences that they've collected over the many years I've researched. And it was so exciting, you know, it was so, so different from a lot of climate change summits that I've been to, where you sit there and you're supposed to just absorb and then walk away and you, and, and really not knowing where that's going to take you, you know, because you're just filled with scientific fact. This was about um, our emotional and relationship connection to each other and to our environment. And it was on a much more, um, it shifted people's um, paradigm more than just your headspace, not just learning facts and figures, um, but it was also just about caring and having relationships. Activism and creativity, I think they are one of the best fits. And because often when you're trying to access your community, the way to do it is creatively. So the um, thing that, that really works for my community back home is um, young people, um, food and music. And you put these three things together and you get a really successful project because our people are really thoughtful and caring of what's happening with our young people and love it when our young people are involved in things. Um, so I, we've done lots of uh, mentoring on songwriting, um, getting radio ready songs, composing radio ready songs with as young as 13 year olds, 12 year olds. Um, I teach music in schools and so I really believe that instilling a creative force is really important because then people will kind of access who they are. And, and then find their own beliefs and their own passions and then drive that and lead that in the world. What we really had to flesh out was um, the, the connectivity. So first of all, with us in the Pacific, we're connected from, from this side, from Vancouver Island, uh, right over to Aotearoa, we're, we're connected by this mass, mass body of water called the Pacific. And so, when, when you talk about connection, you have to sort of, in some ways, you have to start thinking indigenous. You've got to go, our waters connect us. We have these artery systems that are living, breathing, that we've used for voyaging, that we've used for trade in many, many hundreds of years ago. And we still maintain this historic connection. And so it's important that um, remembering that genealogy is really important. Even if it's not in our living memory, we know that it's true. We know that there's been connection between our peoples. So that's the first thing, is, is establishing our, our, our historic connection and the importance of continuing that connectivity because we are 
connected not only through water but through a lot of our stories um, are similar through um, some of our experiences are similar um, and also some of our knowledge systems are really similar so strengthening that is important how does that support our local community if you're inviting an international sort of crew to come over so that's the second part of the of your sustainability and 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 we're in time what we manage to do, and, and I think it's really starting to develop more and more, is that in my community, a lot of people don't leave home and or haven't even left home. We live an hour away from any rural, um, any township, so we're quite rural and we're, because of that, quite traditional. And um, so what that helped with my um, community was to just, they were so excited that people were coming. And, and so interested in what their experiences were and so profoundly moved that our stories were so similar. And so what that does is it, it inspires you to remember, to, to um, know the strength of what you know because it's connected somewhere else. You know, it gets reinforced. And so there's historic connectivity, then we start to establish what the current connectivity is and our living memory which then creates and solidifies all these relationships. And then the third part is like what happens when they all leave? How do we create a sustainable sort of legacy? And so the red tie was always about how do we create legacy? We, we create that in um, you know, doing our wood carvings that would then be gifted to the school. We do that by exchanging cultural artifacts that helps us to remember this moment. We do that through exchanging indigenous knowledge systems and sharing those stories, which really inspires us to think about how that's relevant to our own community. And then we start to create what Red Tide, um, what we sort of followed up with is some of the streams that came out of it. So how do we develop our young people? Because that's really important. And they're meeting sort of a diverse range of people and, and young people too, there was quite some young mob that came over and like they were really happening, they were filming, they were you know, out, they were um, vocal, they were articulate and they, um, you know, so that's really inspiring for our young people to see. So it, it absolutely is that the global is the local and the local is the global. You know, there's these, this connectivity of our worlds that we have to keep on establishing. Whether it's through their relationships and their family members over there, or whether it's because we are not just a singular entity, you know, we are actually um, a network of uh, global connections. So, um, yeah, the, um, the, the, the going back to the local relevancy of, of organisations like PPP that reach out beyond their geographics and actually sort of see a vision that in actual fact we, we are very connected, we have historic relationships with the Pacific, um, we're part of the Pacific because we our, the shores lap our toes um, and, and also it gives us a really good model of, of how to uh, be respectful to First Nations people that live in this country, be respectful to all cultures that want to participate and that we want to celebrate with. And, um, you know, Pacific, that Pacific sort of vibe has always been known for its hospitality and its generosity. And um, so all of those things is what you're embodying as an organisation. And it doesn't always necessarily mean that that's because you geographically want to be somewhere else, but it's just embodying um, a very personal and, and relevant relationship that, um, you know, is just part of your makeup and who you are. And um, so when you talk about who you are, it's not um, geographics who you are, but just what makes you up as an organisation. Um, the people that have come through it, it makes it very personable, makes it very relevant to your local community because you uphold values, you uphold integrity, you uphold respect, you uphold connectivity, cultural um, diversity. Um, all those things are integrally part of you because you know, of, of the kind of, um, of your, your main ethos and, you know, as being Pacific People's Partnership, I think it's uh, incredibly amazing. I, was, I have always been blown away 
for the kind of work that you've all done. We have uh, one of our Ponu's ancestors, um, Apunu, who we're named after. The Whanau Apunu translates to the family of Apunu. So this figure, uh, this ancestor, Apunu, was constantly being defeated by one of um, the, our neighbouring tribe, and they became great enemies. And and he, this enemy would always like going, "Yep, well, I beat you again." You know, and Apunu would come back home and he would be like, why am I being defeated by this? And then he was advised um, through his own meditation and, and questing to do three things. And one was to see the world as if you were, um, you know, a bird. So you get that kind of bird's eye view of what's going on. And this is a, a story of when you create a bird's eye view, you see that not only your localized community, but you see how connected you are all around and you can see the whole scene of what's going on so you can make better decisions and then um, he was then told to sit with this rock and it's called Takore and Takore is actually the name of um, the rock that where our land sits on where our house lives our family home is and the saying is Takore Tokotu which is the land that, uh, the, the rock that holds steadfast and so it was like hold steadfast to your beliefs, to your values, and um, you will always succeed. So that was his second quest. And then his third one was to leave his area and go out and talk to the ones that had were great warriors, you know, so that he could understand what they thought and how they thought. And so therefore he left his own community and went away for several months talking to, um, you know, other others to, to see how he could defeat his enemy. He came back and they fought and he defeated him. And so it was, it's always this thing that we're being told, like bird's eye view, hold steadfast, but also know that not all your answers are always in your local community and sometimes you have to leave to come back and, and bring it back to your community. And so these are all these kind of things that we need to be talking to our um, local funders. Um, how to make relevant our world when we're like PPP has uh, fingers that spread right out not just in your local localized area but you're, you're spread you want to spread out and you want to see say yes we're part of a Pacific network we have a bird's eye view of what that looks like and of course we bring it down and we funnel it down through our local community but you know our fingers are not just one thumb we have these other fingers attached to a hand and we're all part of this appendage and we have all these systems that connect each other and so it, it's quite left of centre to, to talk about to funders who really just want what's going to be the local relevancy, what's the local solution and how is this locally sustainable you know so it's it's really embedding that in your values, our values, embedding that in um, our um, story you know, somehow make and finding that connectivity with the First Nations would be quite useful, I think, and 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 not in a um, superficial way, but just find the because that sort of spiritual connectivity to why you're doing what you do is really important because it gives you a sense of purpose and it gives you a sense of groundedness when you can embed it in a relevant story that's given to you by an elder or sit with them and go, well, how can we? find um, find the way to ground ourselves here whilst doing all our work out there. And often our elders will give you something, a story that you think has nothing to do with whatever, and it takes a while for the wisdom of those words to kind of sit and find why it is. And so, so our, when our ancestor did that, and he, uh, he certainly didn't get told these things directly, he had to meditate, he had to um, listen, observe, watch where success was and the environment you know and his whole um, connectivity to that was part of it the bird's eye view hold steadfast and and if you need to go look for your knowledge outside of your own area